there is an operator sitting on this side of the table talking about content. Uh, it could have been a devices person, it could have been a person from the OTT industry, it could have been a person from, uh, the, from Facebook or Google, uh, but frankly it just goes on to say how all of these industries are merging together. So without much ado, um, I'll start, uh, hope we have a, a good discussion. So what would I be covering? Um, we will look at what are the growth drivers to content consumption. We'll spend some time on what are the what uh, these drivers have led to from side of the consumer and how things have changed from the supply side. Where does the operator stand in the midst of all of these changes? Is the operator the dump pipe or should he become smart or smarter? If we were to, if the ecosystem was to work with the operator or the operator were to work with the ecosystem, how would that work and what are the emerging trends for the content ecosystem followed by the Q&A. So let's just begin here. Uh, I'm from Aircel. At a, there was um, a phase of, in, in, in the period of 2011 to 2012 when Aircel did a whole lot of revolutionary things uh, that were innovative. Uh, there was pocket games, there was pocket apps, there was pocket internet, all of these making us a really, really innovative brand. How was the uptake of these services at that time? Small but interesting. But was it standing too far ahead of its times? Maybe so. So here we are, standing in the middle of an explosion in the data economy, uh, the explosion that is happening more in India than in any other country, where uh, we have almost th uh, 1,034 million mobile customers, out of which 35 to 40% them of them are on smartphones, and a mobile penetration that is only growing. So let's look at some of the drivers. Uh, one, seven and a half billion mobile subscriptions around the world, 100 million of which were added in Q1. India, out of that, accounted for 1.1 billion, um, at a, uh, which is, but still showing uh, penetration that could go up from 88%. 43 million users were added by India in Q117, making it almost 50% of the 100 million added. It's not, it's not just the users, data grew too. We're talking about 7.8 exabytes being consumed in India, with the Asia-Pacific region, China, APAC, India, all together contributing to the largest growth that happened in the mobile, uh, in, in the usage of data. To support this data, there is a whole lot of investment that is required in the mobile networks. Third, so what, how, so what about user consumption? From 4 GB per month, users went on to now using 11 GB per month. There was a point in time when we did not know what to do with 1 GB, uh, and now we are talking about 11 GB in the month, uh, in, the, in the year of 2020, 90% of which will come from smartphones. Uh, India uh, will, uh, from its 4 GB, will go up to 11 GB. We've, in terms of affordability, we are already at 1.3 uh, at data prices down to 1.3 percent GDP per capita, and smartphones are expected to be down to 1500. So the affordability barrier has been broken. Speeds very, very critical for enjoying the content that is there on mobile on the internet. And, uh, you know, uh, from a speed of 6.8 Mbps uh, currently, which can vary depending on which network you are and the time of the day that you surf, we expect to go up to 20 Mbps uh, in India by 2020, uh, with the European continents and America still being higher than us. But there are disruptions that happen. There are disruptions that cause this data speed to go up to as high as, uh, to, to quite high levels, and that gives us the enjoyment of the content. India as a country, that is the fifth biggest driver. We are a very young country, 27 years, with a GDP that is uh, growing, one, uh, that is the fastest growing GDP, 1.3 billion people. The internet economy contributes almost 4.1% um, to the uh, economy of the country. From 2016 to 2020, we're talking about 477 million internet users going up to 730 million, showing the huge opportunity that the internet presents. 33% uh, of them 
today are from rural but watch out that's going to be 50% of your of of your users going forward it gives you enough opportunities to monetize today the digital ad share is only 14% of the overall advertising revenue that is slated to grow to 20% so there is money to be made in the business the video users from 160 million will have a 80 million 80% 80 jump calling for the networks calling for the equipment manufacturers and the content industry to 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 deliver to this hunger for content vernacular languages will be 75 percent so there is it's a vibrant active economy a vibrant active internet economy that will call for a lot to be delivered from the entire ecosystem and the disruptions who's who's not aware of that uh, in ever since the launch of a new operator uh, in India India's mobile data usage per sub has grown by 80 at 80 percent annually there's have been a 40% drop in data tariffs. Uh, smartphone ASPs are down to almost 1,500. Uh, we are talking about uh, uh, about a very, very affordable internet ecosystem on your mobile phone. What does this do to content? If you were to look at it, hot, uh, one video streaming app, uh, as I've highlighted, consumer streams grew by four, grew four times a music streaming app grew by three times and in my discussion with uh, some other content partners that we work with uh, some of them who are available across uh, operators have seen 10 times the growth of traffic onto their platforms the second uh, one was demonetization uh, the critical to the whole content ecosystem is whether the payments can be made uh, the payments earlier which uh, you know the digital uh, payment ecosystem was very small in India with a small percentage of credit cards and debit cards but with the demonetization the apps uh, the payment apps and the mobile wallet penetration has shot up and it is expected to grow 190 percent from now until 2022 now access rates uh, this was this is extremely important because a person earlier was conscious of how much data was he using on his phone given the fact that he had a certain allowance in mind uh, that he could put and an expenditure in mind that he could put against data from data prices of 228 rupee a GB uh, that has fallen down to 50 rupee that will uh, uh, that will fall down to 50 rupees a GB in 2022 but the consumption is already for, uh, gone up from 1.2 GB per sub to almost around 6 GB per sub not just on 4G even 3G has an impact from 0 0.7 GB per sub we are looking at 1.5 GB per sub that will happen now all of this will leave a very very challenged telecom operator because to cater to all of this demand there is investments that are needed and in the current uh, um, situation of data rates falling to this degree investments are very hard to come by although it is a necessity and therefore they are coming by so the cost of technology is currently not commensurate with the revenue that we are making, but it is a pipe that will keep getting fueled by the operators to cater to the demands. So overall, we are talking about an ecosystem where date affordability is high, data prices are falling, the smartphone prices are falling, smartphones are supposed to go up. Um, there will be an expansion in the data coverage and the reach to rural. So all of this leaves the consumer begging for what is it that I can do on my phone so what does a consumer actually do today and where is it supposed to go so let's look at some consumer trends and also look at to cater to this consu these consumer trends and anticipated consumer trends what is the supply side of the content business doing so a lot of you would have shared this diagram, uh, seen this diagram, but we are talking about what happens in an internet minute in India. Uh, this is a Mary Maker report, uh, but if you were to look at the split, a big chunk of the usage is happening on social media, Facebook, Google, um, uh, WhatsApp. Uh, Indians are, uh, you know, overall across the world, almost four to five hours are being spent 
on the internet every day and that's almost 30 percent of your waking hours. Uh, India is not far behind. Four hours a day on the mobile, two hours of it on entertainment. That is seven times television viewership. So you can clearly see that the screen is changing. Now what do Indians do on the mobile phone? 45 percent entertainment. Uh, a good chunk of time is spent on social media and the instant communication apps and the balance 20 percent of the time there is shopping, there is finance and other things to do. Now eight and a half hours of video being watched on Facebook and YouTube. Um, they are taking a huge chunk of the video traffic that comes on us. And while rural customers uh, currently have, own, have discovered largely entertainment, and we will address the um, language challenge going forward, uh, urban customers are slightly more diversified in what they do. Let's look at video as a category, the biggest category and the biggest consumption of data on our networks. 50% of the mobile data today is consumed by video and this is slated to go up to 75% by 2020 and some reports even say that this will go up to around 82%. Now India will provide the second largest audience for videos by 2020. Mind you, all of the, all the video um, creation uh, companies, there is enough to be, we have a a very thriving cinema um, industry that is uh, regional in all respects. There are new formats that are coming in, all of them driving video growth significantly. We're talking about a 13% growth in audience with a 10 times increase in mobile data uh, traffic. To cater the networks are literally being built to cater to this particular traffic which can move from standard definition to high definition. All of the players in the, tel in the mobile content ecosystem, OTTs, telecom uh, networks, uh, content creators, for everyone, this is the most significant category. A whole lot of players have launched their video uh, content in India and I may not have listed all of them here and these are in no order of preference, uh, but we will see more action in this space. So what are people doing on video? It is driven by the youth, but it is age pervasive. Everyone watches it. Uh, YouTube remains like the remains the most important destination where uh, videos are accessed. However, it also shows the trend that instead of long format videos, which are viewed by some, it's the short format videos that are uh, that are the ones that are winning. This might be user-generated content, this might be content that is uploaded uh, on YouTube uh, by professional studios, but overall, there it is inspiring a creative industry which now has a platform to stand up and showcase videos and an audience that is willing to watch it. So six, because 62% of the content that is consumed on, the on, on YouTube is short format. Uh, as far as television and video, de video on demand uh, and uh, live streaming is concerned, only 14% prefer um, live streams, but put a match, a cricket match and a critical one uh, in India and it will all be live streaming that day. So for sports event and certain live events, live streaming will become extremely important, although 34% are also moving to video on demand. Um, on demand. The willingness to pay by the customer is low uh, at the moment, but I think increasingly we will see that the customer will be willing to pay. The, curia the, the most important thing that is this market is extremely fragmented. Uh, for watching television on different channels or specific programs that you want, you have to go to four different OTTs. For watching a movie, you, have, you might have to search that movie across three or four, um, three or four networks. But if you were to see, no consumer will look for more for a for a piece of content beyond three apps. I was, I mean, just to be get a little anecdotal. My daughter was having a sleepover, and uh, we, she wanted to watch a particular movie of Harry Potter. Two, uh, I checked on two uh, two uh, OTT players that I subscribed to, could not find the movie, and I was almost at the point of giving up when I searched on the third one. Had I not found it there, frankly, I would have changed the movie. So it is. A fragmented television and movies market in India driven by extremely high costs. So even if you see the growths, I'm wondering whether the costs are commensurate with it. 
what are the video trends that we will see in 2017 and going and a couple of years thereafter we have a need for all models in India. The diversity of India is very difficult with uh, to address with one single model. So you will have uh, subscriptions, you will have transactional one-time views, and you would have to have an ad-led model. The video content is snackable, um, and UGC will be will will also play a big role. The average length of the video is uh, is falling, so it makes sense to create small length videos in addition to focusing on investments in only big move uh, big movies. Cord cutting, well, uh, I just bought a second TV. Frankly, I don't have a set top box against it. So uh, this will grow. Uh, higher in the US and the Canada markets where we are saying that uh, it, it would have fallen uh, there are many people who don't want to go for uh, a set-top box or a DTH provider because they have uh, their entertainment available on the mobile live streaming this will dominate 2017 with people demanding more live experiences of their favorite content especially sports and uh, music um, events uh, AR, VR and 360 videos, everyone is investing over here. Um, there are some breakthroughs that have happened and the broadcasters are having, um, need to keep a good eye on this field because this is this might define the future. Original content. Now, this, um, a lot of us follow uh, original content that is hosted on, on, on many OTTs. This becomes a key differentiator because in a market where content is so expensive and you can have just part of the uh, some part of the content this becomes your exclusive property what can work over here is how you tease the audience with showing them a little and then get them to eventually buy the product by buy a subscription into the same series it's a very successful model that I have seen one of the OTT uh, guys develop release on YouTube get the uh, get uh, you know get some interest uh, a few episodes free on the app and thereafter paid content. I move on to music. Now this is the ubiquitous music emotional need. If I have an app that has a playlist that I have built, I will stick to that app. Um, the app is free today. If it starts charging me, I will still stick to it. So there is significant usage of music and this this industry seems to be slightly more mature than the music and the movies, uh, than the movies and the television industry with respect to fragmentation. Uh, most of the apps have all of the, uh, all the content and then it is the UI and the playlists that kick in. Now India is a free streaming, 50% of the uh, of the worldwide uh, music revenue has shifted to digital streaming. Uh, we expect similar in India, uh, 26 music apps usage in India is already up 26% uh, percent, and there are 74 million urban internet consumers who stream music. Uh, we ex India is a free stream market but it is starting to build an appetite for payment, either um, direct payment or uh, as far as the operator services are or indirect not just for operators but for a lot of e-com players also who are happy to now give music free uh, as a service along with uh, to support the the customers gaming now this is the single most monetizable property high engagement and a very very high propensity to monetize it is already generating arpus of 2.4 uh, dollars even in India and it is it is ubiquitous in the sense that there are women there are men all of them uh, playing mobile games the APAC territory will contribute almost 47 percent to the global uh, games revenue uh, so this is an opportunity in India to build games on local themes and integrate local languages and micropayments such that more and more people can play social now, while this is not traditionally content, a whole lot of content sits here. Uh, it's not just a whole lot of content that sits here. It also has the highest penetration share of time spent, uh, spent by the Indian consumer. Uh, India has already topped and become the largest number of, uh, f uh, number of users for uh, Facebook. Uh, we are talking about this as a destination where a whole lot of content is seen and promoted. So you cannot ignore this because, but this is a threat to the OTT monetization because the, because the ad revenue concentration is the highest in the social, uh, in social media currently. 
Ecom, uh, while this is not traditionally content, this is stuff that happens on the phone, and uh, it is in uh, it is slowly and steadily that India will reach to ha uh, from a 23 percent to a to a to a significantly high penetration in e-commerce. So where are we with respect to the customer? It is everyone who is scrambling in this in in, in this internet uh, ecosystem. We are talking about social media, e-commerce, OTTs, telecom operators, broadcasters, device uh, devices. Everyone talking about talking to the customer to buy the content from itself in the various formats in the various UIs. But if you were to look at a customer, he just wants to consume the content that he wants to consume. So how does this whole ecosystem? work together, bringing its respective advantages such that the right content in the right manner can be delivered to the customer and everyone takes its share of pie, share its pie. What is the opportunity that we are talking about? We are talking about a 21,000 crore opportunity in 2020, uh, out of which 86% will be mobile advertising, uh, would be advertising, the balance of it being split into OTT and digital, um, uh, into video uh, subscriptions, music subscriptions, and gaming paid, uh, gaming in-app or paid subscriptions. Now that is, uh, that, uh, that is extremely big. Subscription, therefore, will grow at almost 600% uh, and digital advertising grow by 37%. Now, the only thing to keep in mind with regards to digital advertising is currently Google and Facebook control 85%. So what percentage of it goes back to the OTT universe begs the question. So therefore comes the drive to evolve. Uh, you cannot stay at one place. You cannot stay at one place in technology nor in media. So. If you were to see, and here's an example of UTV, and I have another example of Sun in the next slide, who evolved from simple plain television content to an interactive content that offers mobile gaming. Sun TV, similar example, it launched with three hours of programming and has grown to fill the content gaps in various manners until the launch of the OTT platform by Sun uh, last, you know, in the first half of this year. There is a whole lot of innovation that has happened on the supply side for differentiation. Um, there is offline viewing and that has really driven up usage both in YouTube and uh, Hotstar. The independent artist, suddenly he's found a platform. Um, AI, you know, there are a lot of YouTube celebrities uh, who have actually grown on YouTube and, act, and, and eventually gone to the next point, which is online has decided offline content. Some of these artists are actually now creating TV shows. So there is a big following online, some of it translating into offline. Uh, music majors are going uh, digital. Uh, in my various conversations with the music industry that have happened over the last one or two years, a lot of them took pauses to digitize, digitize their content. Uh, once digitized, they went to YouTube, they went to various places, and the customer could find them. Because it is me, even if it is niche content, that is where the customer will go and find them. There is a shift from print to digital. Uh, newspapers, magazines, um, you know, they, they, the share is falling. and. There is a challenge of advertising uh, revenue. It will, sh it is shifting um, uh, to digital. Educational content. Uh, there are regional language newspapers. News Hunt did a very good job of curating books, curating magazines, newspapers, such that they had a great portfolio uh, of regional and uh, regional content that could be accessed by various people. Health and medical. We are seeing some action there, but there are new niches that are opening up. There is the international market that you can address through the internet, which is monetizable. There is Bollywood. Um, uh, you know, uh, eighty. 18% of Times of India viewership happens in the international market and 30% of Dainik Bhaskar, a regional publication, happens at the international market. Children is another great category. It has been monetized on YouTube um, through various TV uh, products that have, there, that have now gone um, across. So with 
this with this ecosystem in mind how do we build for the next billion because this is this ecosystem is already uh, consuming a whole lot of content of entertainment on social on um, uh, on messaging platforms but who are those next billion we are talking about the local language content here uh, given the fact that 50% of the mobile users and mobile internet users are going to be the rural audience in 2020 we this is a dire need in a study that was done by GSMA it was highlighted that uh, the lack of aware of what makes the internet relevant 72 percent respondents in Asia said that the lack of awareness of what to do with the internet and locally relevant content did not push them to go online now the issue of affordability is largely addressed uh, so that takes away 25% of the pie here. Literacy and digital skills might need some addressing, but how do we make relevant content for the Indian languages? Let's look at the market. We're talking about India, 120 languages, 1600 dialects, 22 official languages. We've got 80,000 daily newspapers with regional publications having a far higher circulation than the English ones. The literacy rate is growing, but uh, only 10% of them read in English, uh, and 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 that accounts for 75% of of the internet user base uh, using it in the Indian languages. It it demands and it asks for content. What are they doing today? If you were to look at the graph on the uh, on the right hand side of your screen, uh, you'll see a uh, chat entertainment uh, social media uh, these are big and 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 it is still being used but the rate of growth that is there on uh, digital payments on government services services that can enhance their life is a lot how much is the content um, uh, available over there minimal what can be done about it? What can be done to address this whole space such that we have all of those 75% of mobile internet users actually ready and grabbing the internet and doing all that they can leading to advertisement and commerce, commerce revenues. Let's look at videos, the highest used in local languages. So 90% of the consumption in India happens in regional languages. Uh, we are talking about a very small segment that goes after English. Now that that gives a Hindi of which constitutes 63 percent and the other regional languages 30 percent. Thankfully we have a very you know we have a thriving industry of movies in in both the Hindi and in both Hindi and the regional languages. So there are big investments that are coming in from Amazon, Netflix, uh, and very uh, and all of the local OTT uh, players to in in the regional language uh, space. The top trending videos, if you were to see on YouTube, are all uh, in their regional languages. So the video space certainly, um, excuse me, will have a lot of action uh, with a whole lot of investments. Vernacular. Uh, if you were to look at the vernacular publications mentioned here, uh, other than Daily Hunt, which is in, so Denik Paskar, uh, all their digital editions uh, has 2 billion page views, Daily Hunt, 3 billion page views with 95% of their traffic being regional. E-commerce has already started, 42 million Indian languages users are reached, this should grow up to 165 million. Now what use is an is an e-commerce app that does not have therefore a language that a customer is very easy, uh, finds very easy to buy from. So various things that are happening, um, you know, there is uh, language has been introduced as an option in Facebook and uh, Google. I'm sure it would have driven a whole lot of uptake. Uh, Google recently made an uh, announcement about Made for India and has asked for all of the app developers to make lighter versions for the uh, for the phones, including regional languages and regional uh, connect. Uh, this audience does not work on uh, text. The biggest challenge for text is how do you incorporate the so many languages on the text? Although some work has been done by in by Indus by the Indus OS, which has tried to build a keypad. I'm hoping that will help. But as much of your conversation, if it happens in icon uh, in visual icons to this base, um, that will help. Uh, 
app stores a great point for discovery are they uh, in local languages today no uh, if there is a possibility of doing that that will help there is an ish opportunity of monetization because digital advertising that is done in regional languages the click click through rates are almost around 60% higher so draw a parallel to the newspaper ecosystem and advertise in the local languages. In my belief, voice will be the biggest disruptor in the local language space. A customer is far more comfortable speaking into a, into a handset and asking for information rather than outside. So AI, while AI-based voice search is being implemented across a lot of top-end platforms, AI-based voice search in Indian languages on devices or OS will be the key to growing this particular, um, you know, this segment. Having said that, and you know, uh, looking at the content industry, there are a whole lot of changes that are happening. Video will be big, uh, supported by regional language. It will grow even better. There is monetization. There is monet because people, uh, given the fact that payment instruments have also gone up, and there is digital advertising, which will certainly grow. So. This presents a huge opportunity to the whole content industry. But as an operator, where do we stand? You know, there are enough forums that we've been part of and enough conversations and articles on what is the operator at the end of the day. Is he a dump pipe or is he someone who can drop the tag of the dump pipe and really become smart? So let's look at, is there a reason to go down that way? So we all of us keep asking this question, should we be a dumb pipe or become smarter? So in this section, I will address why should an operator do anything in the content business at all? Should they build their own services or should they partner? So should I play competition or should I partner with uh, the current ecosystem? And what are the man uh, models of engagement in this ecosystem? Let's look at the mobile content mobile ecosystem, not the content ecosystem. Mobile ecosystem has got infra vendors, devices, uh, distribution, content and services and operators. Uh, the operator delivers 64% value into the mobile ecosystem. What is value? Value is the total income that is generated by a company or sector, including employee compensation, business profits, payouts to the government. So. If you were to see from 2012 to 2020, while the operator is delivering 64% to the ecosystem, what is growing is the value that is contributed by the content and the services. Uh, because more and more time is spent on consuming uh, video content. Now, while value is increasing on the content and services side, the investments are increasing on the operator side. Now, so therefore, Delivering 64% of value, yet the revenue is shifting to the services and software. So 41% of operator revenues from core services of voice data and SMS will fall to 38% uh, by 2025. Uh, we are talking about, therefore, a reduced EBITDA because to cater to all of this traffic, data traffic that comes in, and um, uh, would, would, would need significant CapEx investments from all the operators. If you were to see um, the mobile revenue growth, uh, I'm talking about the pure operator services of wise data and SMS will be lower than the GDP growth in 2020 by 2019 or 18. Um, so it will need extremely high CapEx investment by the operators to build LTE, almost 860 billion, that is 16% of the margins uh, of the revenue of an operator will flow into OPEX. And that is even before, free, before 5G. Now this impacts not just uh, the revenue, but also the investments, therefore, that flow into the um, flow into operator uh, business vis-a-vis -vis the investments or the market cap that goes into the large cap tech companies, um, Apple, Google, Facebook, uh, Amazon. So with 64% of the value being added uh, by the operator community and a falling share of revenue, in the mobile ecosystem, the operator needs to look around to see where is it that it can actually get that incremental revenue and yet deliver the uh, deliver and to finance the, uh, the the investment that is needed for the hunger of data that we see today. 
So in the mobile ecosystem, therefore, in the mobile ecosystem, the operator and every other player can expand in whichever direction. So what is the opportunity that exists for the operator? In addition to simple plain direct revenue that you could get from content, which is which would essentially cover subscription revenue or ad revenue, the operator also has an indirect revenue. Uh, Direct revenue um, potential is all uh, you know. Even if the operator manages to get two percent share of the of the content subscriptions that are uh, that are to happen across the world, that would be eight billion dollar uh, uh, eight billion USD. Now, when it happens is a question of when the customer starts play starts paying and how does the operator monetize it. Now, here we are talking about uh, competing with the OTT players in the advertising market, and this is direct incremental revenue that goes to the uh, goes to the operator if it is not in in uh, direct revenue the operator still stands to earn indirect revenue the data burn on all of these high bandwidth services is 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 high um, so either the operator can earn through data burn um, or uh, it has also been proven that uh, you know offering some of these services increases subscriber stickiness so um, in some of the um, markets internationally where uh, an incremental service example even mobile payments uh, was offered churn rates fell down from 3% to almost around 0.5% in the subs in the customers that took mobile payments. Uh, music again behaves like behaves uh, as a very very sticky product. So there is a significant earning that can happen for the operator via indirect revenues. The operator could choose to venture into platform play, um, which is essentially enhanced revenue by opening up the telco platforms, either network or at a software level, various APIs that the OTTs could therefore use. Some, an example could be location to target customers in a certain area. Identity is another API, uh, given the fact that people do remember their mobile phone numbers, but they hardly remember the multiple logins that they have created at, uh, at the sites. The last but not the least is there was a time when the operator and the mobile number was at the center, was at the customer center. There are services that the operator might still want to take to its customers that the other OTT players may not find uh, economically viable. Uh, things such as security, things such as what, how can you keep your mobile phones, um, uh, how can you enhance the productivity. So the operator could choose to launch services that establish the operator as an innovative player that thinks for its customers. Let's restrict ourselves to the content space and look at who are, what is the content space like. These slides will be a little heavy, but I would walk you through it. So if we were to look at the first row, the people who are playing in this cat in the content ecosystem are the content owners, uh, the creators, and the content um, studios. Then there is the access channels, the telecom operator or the broadband provider or the DTH or broadcasters. These are the ones that take you take the content to the last mile. And between the two of them, although not represented in the diagram, uh, are the content aggregators. Um, or the OTT players. Um, I have given examples of all of them um, uh, on the slides. Now there is an interplay that happens between all of them and each one of them has their own challenge, have their own challenges and opportunities. Uh, what are the challenges? Uh, there is discovery, um, you know, the content owners of face a ch uh, challenge of uh, discovery and piracy. The access channels, um, which is telcos and DTH broadcasters, are facing a loss of core revenue backed by high investment and losing the customer's mind share and the content aggregators are faced with an extremely fragmented market with high content costs with a very low willingness to pay but there are opportunities that exist uh, opportunities of partnerships that exist through and through so if you were to see the arrows down there there is a possibility of m and um, Within the access channels, there is a possibility that an operator might go and license content directly or an operator might work with an OTT to deliver its services or someone who might just have a play through and through. Um, there are some m as that are happening first within uh, from fixed to mob uh, fixed and mobile and thereafter uh, with pay TV, but this is largely a developing economy uh, scenario. The um, 
current eco the emerging economies still have a distance to grow here. So what is the engagement model with an operator if you would choose to do business with one? Well, there are uh, some things have already happened in the developed markets. Things have been happening in the Indian market also. But if you, there are four models, partnerships. I, we partner with OTTs to deliver. There is competition. We create competing OTT uh, solutions. Um, there is adaptation where essentially the telco were to actually license content or there is neutral. I just have a neutral platform. All music services come and plug in. Partnership seems to be the most prevalent one. And frankly, the choice of the choice to build or partner is a function of the service type, the degree of impact and operator um, on the operator business and the market value. Now, what works in partnerships are the low costs um, and a choice of niche that an operator could have but the implications are low uh, low revenue um, potential and a less lesser control on the product a lot of operators and so in India that you would see have been creating uh, that gives a direct control on the proposition and hopefully direct revenues in the future but the content costs are again prohibitive and we need and this is non core telecom business we need special expertise to run it I would like to focus on partnership over here while this is a very busy slide for uh, and you know um, this will be available at ET Telecom. Um, it is the most prevalent engagement model and uh, I'll take you through the services and which ones of the services do we feel are where you know operators might like to build or partner. So you take you through an example of the video service which frankly as we dis uh, which we discussed is the most used service on the internet. Uh, the operator can monetize this through the indirect revenue on data consumption. Uh, so therefore more, in most cases, it would like to build its own service. Uh, where it is not possible to build, it might look for a partnership um, to deliver that. Uh, the critical thing to take care of in India is um, you should have long format videos, but of course, but don't forget the short format videos. Almost 60% consumption is there. Make sure your videos are bandwidth optimized. You know, there are 4G networks, there are customers for 3G and 2G, just make sure that that is available through and through. Aircel um, today focuses and looks at partnerships in uh, the 3G, 2G space such that all of our customers, urban or rural, who might be using these networks can still enjoy the mobile internet and therefore take 4G later. Uh, the investment potential highlights what is the propensity of an operator to invest in this business? Yes, on videos, it, videos can command a high degree of interest from operators. Internationally, you've seen a lot of companies, Telefonica in Spain has actually invested in original series. So um, you could walk down this tree, but um, you know, uh, games is something where a telco will look at partnerships because uh, games are here and now and have a very short attention span. Uh, news and entertainment is snacking content, uh, great for um, indirect revenue and mobile health, agriculture and utilities. Um, in that space, uh, we would like to work with a wider ecosystem to deliver this. How do you monetize uh, the content? There are, you know, you the operator has a strength. Um, it has a huge customer base. It has billing capabilities that can help monetize content. It has a distribution that 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 goes to almost around two million outlets across the uh, across the country. And there are APIs, strong data heavy uh, APIs for targeting. You could choose to partner with them on any one of these, depending on what your what what is the best input to your business model that you could get. Uh, the services that work best in each one uh, other than um, uh, for bundling. So there is bundling that you could do. There is content billing, which is which can deliver an ARPU of almost around one and a half to two and a half, two point four dollars. Just make sure that there are micro payments and weekly monthly options uh, in place. Um, any one of these models, if it adds value onto the OTTs and the telco is a great model to go ahead with. How do you monetize the telco APIs? And I'm just focusing on two here for the uh, for uh, the interest of time. Uh, there is a noise for privacy and it will only go up. So operators in India, along with GSMA, have launched Mobile Connect that 
opens out identity using the mobile phone across multiple applications. So you just have to remember your uh, phone number and you could log into multiple sites. The OTTs could make use of that. Operator billing, operator payment gateways via billing aggregators or the Play Stores, uh, Play Store, Windows, uh, Google, um, that addresses the monetization channel for all the OTTs. Coming to digital uh, India, I mean, you know, the government has set out um, various key uh, tenets that define digital India. The most important thing, affordability and the reach of the internet is resolved. Uh, that was a deliverable from the operators. Uh, unique customer identity, the government's done a great job in it. Payment options have gone up and local content development has just about started. Now to create a positive social impact using all of these, there is more local content and talent, talent that is needed and a whole lot of coordination in the ecosystem. Now, this is a space where everyone will watch out for unique content and, and innovations that can fuel the growth, um, obviously supported by clear policy and guidelines. So for the last section, let's look at some uh, emerging trends for the content uh, business. Everyone's been talking about IoT, uh, smart homes, virtual reality, and 5G. Well, uh, you know, um, in the last webinar, if you had seen, 5G still looks like three to four years away. But all of these, the smartphones, the IoT, which um, uh, and the AR, VR, will change the media industry and will change the content play in some manner. I'm sure all of the content business will will evolve to it and. Of, and, and the whole ecosystem will work to see what is it um, that can be delivered in this space. Uh, we have our enterprise IoT, which tries to address a lot of, um, address and deliver a lot of solutions within the IoT space um, to various organizations that might uh, need it. But as far as the near term is concerned, because all of us are interested in the revenues that we make today, and in the next three years, what are the key things that I would like to leave you with? One, there is a need for partnering and consolidation in the content ecosystems with such high content costs and a customer who cannot have a patience for more than three apps of a category, we are extremely fragmented. More importantly, all of us have strengths, strengths to leverage uh, on. There is a good degree of partnership that the space calls for. Second, uh, Content needs to be differentiated to address all the bandwidths, the niches that exist, the individual artists and talent that exist uh, throughout. There is a need for exclusives for differentiation and communities. Uh, choose your niche, uh, differentiate, and that is what will make you uh, stand out. Payments, um, you know, there is a monetization that is needed. Micropayments with strong payment options integrated will really drive this ecosystem to, profit, uh, to, to making revenue. Operator billing, operator mobile wallets, payment wallets, all of them are ready. Um, as far as content is concerned, short format, localized and vernacular content. This is the future of India. Um, not necessarily short format, but localized and vernacular uh, content. There is technology and I'm, um, that will come in in the form of OS or AI to aid discovery and discovery on voice will be a key but before that let's get the content ready. Uh, APIs, there is a huge strength in operator partnerships, um, one customer base to reach, uh, you know, to reach out trials to generate with the operator, extremely rich APIs that we that we have today and future innovations that would be therefore opened out into this world. Public services, we, we are very keen to work on partnerships and public services to take all of these services to the last mile. And last, but certainly not the least, uh, there is a reimagined operation that we need to, that we as telecom operators need to ensure internally to drive innovation. Um, we're talking about cloud platforms, uh, API platforms, uh, all of our different points coming together such that we have one view of the customer and not just one singular um, data point that rests in every application and a speed to market. Now, this will be a deliverable from the, for the telcos, whether it chooses to build, whether it chooses to compete, whether it chooses to play in any form in the, in the ecosystem. 
And with that, um, I hand it over uh, to the ET team. Um, Prerna, um, I think we could we could take the questions. Thank you, Ms. Rathi, for such an engaging presentation. I'll start with the question and answer session now. First question is from Swati. She's asking, in the sea of content apps, how can, how can a telco ensure good market for its own set of content apps? Okay, so um, as as I had mentioned uh, in my PPT, uh, you know there are various uh, in there. You know, as far as a telco is concerned, there are various monet, uh, ways of monetization. There is a direct monetization and an indirect monetization. Now, in addition to the direct and the indirect monetization, the telco also has various channels through which it can reach the customer. So, when a telco has his or her own app all of the models that I mentioned to you that are available out to the OTT in addition to that incremental channels that a telco has to its customers SMS USSD any one of them can be used to reach the customer so three things one I have billing Two, I, I think the telcos have the channels to reach out to the customer. See, uh, rich customer data through which we can segment the customer and see what is it that can be given. Uh, what we need to look out for of our ecosystem is content, pa content partnerships or uh, licensing of content. Next question from Lakshmi Kalwani. Um, he has two questions. First is, how much importance does UI UX have in this change? And second question is content validation and testing would be how important for all channels? I think in my view uh, there are uh, UI UX forms a very very plays a very very critical role in differentiating a content and differentiating content I have seen people experiment with music apps and actually drop the playlist for UI and UX Okay, so uh, there is a, you know, that is a key thing that will stand out in this fragmented uh, telco market. As far as testing and all are concerned, yes, of course, if your product does not work right, you can forget the monetization. So um, the app has to be, has to work well for any of, of whatever I mentioned in my presentation to happen. Next yes, question from... Next question from Preeti. What percentage of revenue are content apps expected to contribute to telcos by 2020? I think in our in our view, um, the this uh, the content apps uh, should easily contribute to around eight to ten percent of the telco revenues by 2020. Next question from Akanksha. With data prices coming drastically down, how do you see content market uh, shaping in India? I think my presentation broadly uh, addressed that. What we were talking about is the data prices are already quite down, and while they, you know, while it is expected to go down uh, even further, not that we would like it, but um, if it is, um, you know, we 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 are really seeing a growth, um, eighty percent growth. I think the video consumption will go to almost around eighty percent. Um, currently, the customers are already using five to six GB of data. We expect that to go up to almost around eleven GB by twenty twenty. Uh, there is a, a you know a social still remains a very very important uh, consumption um, destination for uh, video or any other content in India but I think increasingly Indian customers are also looking at these differentiated apps that exist everywhere to suit to suit their own personal uh, need because the mobile is not a community product it's a personal product so each one can pick up its own uh, product and there will be a whole lot of interaction that will happen in the content ecosystem within itself to see how can the best be drawn and served up to the customer. Next question from Rajesh Gupta. Do you anticipate M&As or consolidation in content space? Well, this is a personal view, but I think in the intra, there, there are two things that will drive this. One, extremely high content costs. Um, and as we speak today, uh, you know, I mean, the in the whole ecosystem, the guys who seem to be at the best pace right now are the content creators. Uh, creators. So uh, given the fact that content costs will go up, um, 
there is consolidation that can happen uh, in, in, in the content space also or else there will be extremely high investments that will be done by one player uh, or a different category of player in the content industry. This will take some time um, but I think it is likely to happen because if you were to example if you were to take television uh, I think one of uh, you know one of the operators who actually you know could marry all of the individual te uh, television channels has some of the highest viewership on television so uh, a broken up uh, channel uh, you know if I watch one uh, program on one channel another one in another it's a little tough to handle question from Amit Malik yes, right will the data t will the data tariffs go down further in the next two three years Secondly, the data growth is only possible provided that sufficient spectrum is available. Your views, especially for rural India, which is over 40% of the base. So, uh, will the data prices go down? Well, it's a question that all operators have been asking again. But given the disruptions that are happening in the market, you there is still headroom for data tariff to go down although to what degree does it go down uh, is, is is a different question and we need to wait and uh, watch to see that uh, spectrum I don't think so is a challenge uh, anymore um, there is a spectrum available it's a question of where do you take it and what do you uh, what do you do with it uh, rural India um, rural in I, I think any that you know that is the next uh, stage of the growth right now there are you know the penetration in rural India still wants an increase and especially with uh, with respect to uh, smartphones but I'm given the fact that afford the affordability as a barrier is removed and if there are more use cases that come up for the customers I think this will reach rural India uh, uh, soon enough Next question. Can can I go to the next question, Ms. Rati? Yeah, 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 sure. Okay. Next question is from Deepak Rawal. Who do you think is the most successful telco globally who could minimize revenue erosion in the scenario you described? Please share reasons what helped them ensure it. Wow. Uh, there are, I think there are a whole lot of telcos who have uh, done some great work uh, in this space and uh, while I don't think so, I will be able to pick one particular telco but um, AT&T I think has done um, done some great work, it all it in any way uh, does a quad play and the fact that it is going out and acquiring content uh, companies right now says a lot. SK um, uh, Telecom from Korea extremely high usage of its mobile um, of its mobile content businesses and uh, to the degree that they have monetized it to a good uh, to a good degree last I heard KPN was also um, investing in, uh, in 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 original series now it is extremely interesting what happens with respect to original series uh, and OTT platforms because it will come to a point where literally the artist and what he gets paid will get determined by his consumption on digital. So I think there are a whole lot of telcos who have uh, done work, but um, I, I think each one of them stands out in its own in his own manner. Yes, Prerna. Next question from Purushottam Kumar: Shell Telco should start building the apps as well to increase the revenue. Sure, uh, yes, of course. Um, I think the the choice for which service to build an app for is a function of the telco's business model but frankly um, because of the fact that an app uh, for the service that has been identified can create the rightful value for the telco they should go ahead and create it and I think I had presented that argument in my um, you know in my PPT to say that there is incremental value at the end of the day so why not Next question from Anj Aradhya. Providing connectivity is an obligation for telcos and not to have a controlling stake on the content. Why do you think telcos should have a share in content? Will this be viable? Uh, I agree. Of course, you know, the first reason that the telcos came into being is to provide connectivity. Okay, but you cannot provide connectivity and without earning revenue uh, from it. It's the you know it's a it's a business principle of any any business. Uh, one uh, earn from it, 
and two, look for new ways to go. Um, so give a, so now that we are addressing the connectivity piece and we cannot walk away from that, does that stop the telcos from earning more in the uh, in the ecosystem for its business? No. I mean, today, if Google is into connect, is providing services on the internet free, does that stop it from rolling out drones or does it stop it from providing uh, Wi-Fi at the stations? No. Similarly, for a telco, provide connectivity, provide content, provide digital uh, anything that helps in uh, growing digital India. It extends across, provide payments, so it extends across the ecosystem, and it is up to a telco to decide that what all can it offer in this ecosystem that makes the life of its consumers on the phone better. So there is a case for connectivity, no doubt. But there is there is a case for the telco also offering content in uh, content or any other service for that matter. Next yes, question from Amit Rana. OTT and operator partnership. Who's more benefited? What is the best suited or uh, rather reasonable revenue share? Uh, I would say it is a bene uh, you know both of them would be equal benef beneficiaries i have highlighted various kinds of partnerships that exist i agree there was a point in time where uh, the operator used to take a good chunk of the revenue share but frankly all of the services were hosted on uh, you know on deck for the operator for us uh, now, for all of the operator uh, for the uh, for the operator community, we realize now that there are a cost. There is a cost to the content. There is a cost to content development, and what we are bringing over there is not promotion, but actually connect uh, the billing API. So the ecosystem, the revenue shares have shifted. I think a, a good chunk of the operators are offering a, a far higher revenue share than what they keep uh, at the moment, and. The degree of this is actually defined on uh, would would I think be a function on the individual business alliance with that with that operator. So now we'll yes, be please. taking the last question for today. Last question is from Amit okay. Malik. He's asking any regulatory roadblocks that you see in data growth. Uh, I think right now where the telcos uh, are standing, uh, there are enough questions uh, from a regulatory perspective um, or, um, you know, you know, to, to, to just simply make the business even viable or profitable. Um, so there, are, there is obvious, uh, you know, there were, there were concerns that were raised uh, earlier on uh, net neutrality. I think till the time that access is defined to be open and to be and free for the customer to use where he wants, uh, net neutrality is ensured. So I think, uh, you know, that should be uh, laid aside. That is for content. Uh, as far as uh, data growth is concerned, there are various um, uh, there are various requirements that the operators have put in front of the government, especially in the current scenario where profitability is eroding. That is extremely, you know, the uh, fulfillment of some of those requirements is important uh, from a regulatory perspective, such that the money that is available can be plowed back into the growth of data. Uh, there are big investments that are coming on, uh, that, you know, that are needed to cater to this uh, pipe of data users and uh, some of those regulatory block uh, you know i mean if those are resolved that will really really help all the telcos